as G said, I'm going to go a little out of the box from what probably you normally do because I've talked with, with a lot of the guys at the other three classes I've done. And a lot of you are some pretty killer techs. That's why you hang around with this bunch. So some of the stuff I'm going to talk about tonight, this first thing is upside down from that board up there. This is uh, nice to know, not need to know stuff. But it'll give you an angle on how the inside of a PCM works and what's going on in there. Some of the stuff I know you already know because you're working on the outside. So I'm going to go inside and I've broken down some of the software inside the PCM to show you how it functions and how it talks to, to the uh, hardware inside the box and then how it controls the engine. We're going to look at some of this and how this thing interacts with the software on the car to help you to fix problems. And because I thought it would be more fun, I made the diagnostic executive into a woman. So, <clears throat> unless you want to talk about software, we can do it that way. So, her job is to manage diagnostic trouble codes, first and foremost. This is a totally an emission control function. It tells you, I got a problem, or it tells the driver I have a problem, they ignore it, and then they bring it to you when it's actually broken, right? Manages diagnostic operations. So when you hook a scan tool up, and you go down the list and you say, yeah, I want to look at that, you're telling the diagnostic executive to go into a test that's built into the routines in the software of the PCM. Okay, so that's also her job. And then whenever there's a problem, she files reports like a good secretary and sticks them out there and keep a live memory for you. And says, okay, I have a problem with this, file it. Got a problem with that. The other really cool thing that she does is she goes back and checks her reports every once in a while and makes sure that they're actually active. So, throughout this whole thing, I'm going to throw a few diagnostic realities out at you. And some of them make you laugh, and some of them you're going to say, eh, I get it. I find the technicians, all of us, are almost incapable of reviewing a set of customers' concerns and not coming to some kind of diagnostic opinion. Um, many vehicle brands, as I already mentioned, have considerable reflash opportunities. A lot of times, you can buy a tool and pay for the tool just with the reflashing, just by being careful about checking to see what's out there. Um, because that winds up being an over and above the diagnostic operation. Um, there may be vehicles that you work on with a fairly high mix that just don't have a lot of failures that you really need a heavy duty tool set for. So keep weigh that. You know, there's nothing worse than buying an $8,500 <laughs> dust collector. You know, so make sure that it's something that you do. 